we're about three weeks into the molt now. It's not uh, molted any large feathers, but I'm just going to see if they still come over to my fist. Which he seems like he's going to. After he's had this, I'm going to give him a little bit of rabbit. As you can see here, he's really started to start molting. No, uh, no major primary or anything from the train yet. No large feathers. But three weeks in, still very happy. Still quite content coming to my fist. There's a nice bit of rabbit there he's caught. Quite often I'll put the food that he's eating into a little bit of water just to give it more moisture but he's got his water out there so he can take from that if he needs any water. <clears throat> Most of their um, moisture comes from the food, they don't drink much but during the um, season when the rations are a bit lower obviously you want to make sure that they have got water and then it can be a good idea to just put the food into warm water a couple of minutes before you feed them even if you're out with chicks in your pouch whilst they're flying if they're wet that's all good moisture that they will intake through the food so i'm going to pop him down now because i don't want to stand here all day He prefer to eat that in solitary. There he is there. Sitting on his little perch, he's got water over there. do now a little bit of training with my dog and we're going to take this gun with us this was made in about 1890 and it's a Belgium poachers gun so what you'd have is this little button there you press and that folds up like that and then you slip that into your tunic and that is a, an old fashioned proper poachers 410. Obviously I've got this on a license. I'm using this 410 purely because it's a quieter bang and I'm trying to train Bo to accept that pretty sharp loud noise. He's a little bit wary, primarily he's a hawking dog but during the off season I still want to keep him trained and we're going to try a little bit of pigeon deterrent for the farmer and training for the dog. So here we are, back up the field where the rapeseed oil is. We were flying up here with the hawk a lot as a deterrent, plus he was hunting. But now we're doing this pigeon control. Um, it's not really doing a great deal what we're doing now, but we're going to walk around the field daily for the farmer as a thank you for what he done for us. Let us fly all over his land. It's a bit windy up here, I hope you can hear me. There's a gas gun down in there, which is a pigeon deterrent. But this crop, he's telling me there's areas on this field, about an acre, where the pigeons have devastated it. I think it's over there. These are 
very dangerous because there's no real safety and if you fall these hammers and catch something they will set the cartridge off just by bashing them so the only way to be safe or the better way is to break the gun like that so I keep it open as I say I've got them all on a license obviously nothing better than being out in the fresh air like this it's definitely acting different when I've got the gun I wouldn't say he was totally gun shy but he's not over keen he's definitely wary of the gun good boy so I'll just keep bracing him up and see how we get on so this area here through that field looks like it's been devastated by a pigeon so I want to fire a couple of shots off Good boy, come on in, good boy. If you want to take the cartridges out on that, you just press that in. Well, that is like an auto ejector if you open it quick enough. If you're not seen a gas gun, that's one there, works on the caller, battery, and a device. The chamber fills up with gas, ignites, and out the end it comes. Quite a few pigeon down there. The trouble is with a pigeon, they sit in your garden all day long. But as soon as you walk around a field like this with a gun, they've gone. You can see here they've just stripped all these plants. So I'm going to pull the hammers back now. Just while we walk over the brow of this hill. Obviously being very careful. There's no one walking the other way. Find it. Find it. Good boy. Good boy. The dog is actually pointing. The pigeon I just shot. tonight have a nice bit of pigeon breast I'll go and cook that in a minute and show you how you cook that if done right it can be like a nice bit of steak this is what the crop should be like this time of year it should be really starting to grow well Dolph's got on its scent. We don't want to be catching them little things, do we, mate? Give him a chance.
Olha. Spitting feathers, mate. Step up. Step up, Woody. Step. Yeah, mate. Good lad. Good lad, Woody. Good lad, Woody. Today I'm going to take Woody outside and feed him off of a perch. And maybe tomorrow I'll put it through the chute. It's feeling quite heavy, I reckon he's still about two pound. And he's multi the feather there. Right hand wing. I don't want him to just think every time he sees me go in his muse, I've got food. So I'm putting some through the chute, some from the tray, getting him to hop to the fish now and again. I'm going to uh, put some rabbit actually in the muse now, so when I put him back, he's got something to um, eat in there as well, and he won't know it's from me. So he's got a rabbit head there, nothing goes to waste. And that bit of bone there will keep his beak in a decent shape. now and uh, he's going to have a pick on that through the day. Gives him a bit of enrichment working his way through that bit of bone as well. So as I said before, if you've just got a house hawk, my advice is just leave it alone, let it molt out. But I know this hawk extremely well, and I'm taking it very, very carefully. If it's getting stressed out, I'm gonna stop certain processes. But I did what I've done for the last few molts, and that's just keep him slightly manned. So I'll just keep this going. I'm going in there, he's getting on my fist. If he decides to completely go against getting on my fist and start flapping all around the place, then I'd leave him. But at the moment, he's carrying on the same as he did last season. He's getting on my fist, and I'm feeding him from the chute, from my fist occasionally, and then just offering him food whilst he's on his perch. Last season, I was putting food underneath a piece of artificial grass and then removing the grass so he's not actually seeing it's coming from me although as I say when we're hunting daily seven days a week he knows the food's coming from me anyway they're not silly but when they're at this fat weight their attitude definitely changes he's not as comfortable and what I don't want to do is damage any of those new feathers coming through in the blood so I'm being very careful so just leave your hawk alone don't do what I'm doing I'm just showing you as an interest what the hawk Woody is like because we've been following Woody now for a few years one video a week and this is what what he's doing at the moment I class myself as an amateur 
been doing this now for so I think we've had three hunting seasons and this is our third malt getting some good protein out of that head there he's got some brains in there which is a lot of protein in that he's going to get calcium out the bone and he'll also have some good cast material so he's working away at that now picking all the bits of meat out of it and then slowly he'll start cracking the edges of that bone and by the time I come back later on he'll have completely cleaned that out and at every single piece so a nice good bit of protein and good bit of beak management which is natural using bone and his beak hopefully will uh, stay reasonable I'm sure I'll have to cope it again trim it again that's what happens when they're in molt you seem to get an overgrow beak so once he sheds one of his train I'll go and look in my little book and have a look what it was last year when he shed it and the year before and uh, I've got note of when obviously we first flew him again after the molt so it's good to um, look back and see how things are changing whether I need to change any techniques whether I'm slowing his molt down from keeping interacted with him but there's no hurry so even by September there's so much ground cover here we're in no hurry but I just like to see him have a beautiful clean malt so just trying to keep his enrichment up give him things to do anyway thanks for watching see you next time